G'day. In today's video, I'm opening up a HP ProDesk 400 G7 small form factor PC. As seen over here near the HP logo. And this one's got a i5-10500, 8GB of RAM, 256 gig SSD, running Windows 10 originally. To get in there, we're gonna have to undo this screw here, and then the back should slide off from there. Once we're in, I will explain what could potentially be upgraded or replaced. That's done. This bit should pull back. Uh, no, lift up and back. What do we got? No, it's proving to not want to leave. There we go. Now we're leaving. So now lifting straight up from there. And here we are looking inside. And already I'm slightly underwhelmed with what I see. We see a full size graphic slot down the bottom here. We do have a, where are we? Uh, can see the voltages on here. Trying to read upside down, which doesn't help. Maximum power shall not exceed 180 watts. So a maximum of 180 watts on that power supply. So I'm looking at it, we do not have an extra cable for upgraded graphics. So I'd be struggling to fit a half size 16 times slot or single slot graphics card in here as the fan will probably be clipping on the power supply itself. So by that, probably not going to be putting anything into here. Could use it for external storage and a half height PCI 16 to NVMe kind of adapter. Processor wise you could potentially upgrade it if you've got the i3. I probably wouldn't really go too far over an i7. But with that 180 watt power limit we're really not going to be able to do too much there. So if that could potentially be changed. You've got a very low Pentium or i3. Take the front off. It looks like these undo. I'm assuming we pull to the front. Now, weirdly, there is a disk drive here. Not sure how we're going to go around that, but we'll figure it out. Or we'll just take it off. Problem solved. That one just come off. And this should push forward. First, we want to probably undo the power cable. SATA cable. Push and slide forward. And with that forward, looks like we've got a push tab here, assumably one on the other side as well. So I'm going to push both of those in and slide it forward. With that forward, we can see what we see here. We have a wireless adapter that could potentially be installed down here. So one wireless card could go here. We have an inter uh, a NVMe SSD over here. Just looking at that, strangely, it says 16 gig of Intel Optane, ah, 16 gig Optane slash 256 gig NAND. So that can potentially be upgraded. Looking underneath, we do have room for another single, oh, single Molux power. So you can add a 2.5 inch SSD or, or a larger 3.5 inch hard drive, whatever your choice. Looking at it, you wouldn't also be able to move it to a new case as the front I.O. extends out of the case itself all as one single board. So you couldn't potentially replace that. To change out the NVMe drive, and I will cover RAM after this, to take out the NVMe drive, use a small Phillips head screwdriver. This bit here should unscrew, like so. And then you can just lift it up slightly and pull it back or walk it back. There we go. Do note there is a cutout here which matches the cutout over here. So that the new one should be able to slide in, push in. If you are replacing your NVMe drive, you will either have to reinstall Windows 10 or 11 after you put the new drive in or clone it prior. There is a few steps into that, but I won't bother covering that in this video here. Going on, we have one, two, three SATA ports. One SATA is getting used for the disk drive, and there's another two here for external storage. Next up, we have RAM, which is one slot, two slot. As you can see, this board gets used potentially for more RAM slots, but they aren't soldered in. So that is a tad disappointing. These bits here push out 
one bit and this bit here, like that, pushes out. With it like that, you should be able to grab it and lift it up and we have our RAM. This one's a Samsung 8 gigabyte 2666 megahertz DDR4. Similar to the NVMe, we have a cutout here, with a cutout there. With both these notches out of the way, or here and here, we should just be able to line it up, push down, should make a click sound like that, and these should go up. With them up, we should now be installed. So with that, you could potentially add two sticks of eight, two sticks of 16, probably wouldn't bother going more than 32 gig of RAM in total. So two eights, or two sixteenths, should be perfectly fine. Next up, that covers the vast majority of stuff. Power supply is a proprietary power supply, so upgrading it is going to be quite a challenge, as it does have its own power going directly to the board here. And then over here we have Molex. So I wouldn't recommend changing case, changing power supply, I'd be struggling to add a graphics card in there or finding one that will fit this case. So sadly there's not much we can do in the way of upgrades in that regards. I'll put this, slide this back in through the front. Should click in like so. Power, data, disk drive reconnected. And next up, you wanna put the front on. We do have these notches here, here, and here. And they kind of sit in the bottom, and then you kind of fold it over. Fold it up, like so. Next up, we have the DVD drive cover. Which, if I spin it around to the correct orientation. And which way are we? This way. Should slot into three different holes there, and just push into place. Like so. And now with it like that, we should be right to slide, drop on and push forward the cover, like that, push forward, and then you should be right to do this screw up here at the back. Just thread in, looking to note to tell that you've got the back on just right. You should also have this bit sticking out, like so right there. So it should be looking like that. Anyway, I hope this helps with your questions on the HP Small Factor and I'll see you later. Bye.